more love, more joy, everything. It's inspired young people. Inspiration comes from within you. When you clear out the garbage that's in your mind, you then create space for something better, more beautiful to come in. Let's have life and have it more abundantly. I say yes. It's like taking a workshop. I get to be in my pajamas. We have a very active imagination, which is why it's important to learn how to harness it and then point it in the direction you want to go. I listen to your show every day. It's time now for Living Your Inspired Life with Susan Burrell. Susan is no-nonsense, inspirational, motivational, and fun. This is positive talk radio. Practical wisdom for everyday life. It's a gift you give yourself. Now, here's Susan. And welcome, welcome. I'm Susan Burrell, and you are listening to Living Your Inspired Life, and we are on News Talk 1590 KVTA, and we are here for an hour this evening to talk about our un- our topic of crossroads. Uh, but first, I want to remind everybody that uh, if you or a friend cannot listen to the show when it's running live on KVTA, you can go to the website livingyourinspiredlife.org and listen to the shows there. And then you can also listen to the uh, previous incarnation of Living Your Inspired Life. We have uh, over 250 shows archived on the website to listen to for you just to get tuned up during the week because the thing that we like to talk about is tuning in and tuning up your your interior inspiration and vibration and then begin to develop your own power perspective so you can do that when you go to the website livingyourinspiredlife.org and it's new and uh, dynamic so uh, I and you can email me through there as well susan at livingyourinspiredlife.org if you've got questions you want me to address on the show I'm happy to I'm happy to have a conversation with you on air so With that said, I am really excited. I am so excited. I have one of my favorite authors and teachers and just person, just favorite person in general. She's written uh, many transformational books. Her latest one is Live Your Bliss. And so her name is Terry Cole Whitaker. I want to welcome Terry Cole Whitaker onto the show. Hi, Terry. Hi, Susan. How nice. <laughs> I, I know. I, I gush. I gush a little bit. You're so sweet. I like it. We all should gush all over. We everybody. should gush. <laughs> uh, each other. We wouldn't have any trouble. No, we wouldn't, would we? we? We'd be trying to, if we're going to compete, we'd see who could gush the most. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might would join that competition. <laughs> Um, so, Terry, we're ta- we've been talking about crossroads of mm-hmm. how people, you know, when you're just moving through your life and you're doing the best you mm-hmm. can and all of a sudden something pulls you up short, whether it's a, a, a job change that you didn't expect mm-hmm. or uh, the death of a loved one or a divorce or, and, or uh, children moving out of the house to go to college. And mm-hmm. we find ourselves at this place of an intersection where it's like, okay, the questions start popping up. All right, so now what? What do I do next? Mm -hmm. And we've been inviting uh, people on Living Your Inspired Life to really, instead of figuring out what you're going to do as your first thing, to really drop in and ask the question, who am I now? Who am I now after whatever's happened in my life has been completed? Who am I now? And then where do I choose to go? Mm -hmm. So I, uh, when I was... No, I'm just going to share with the listening audience. When I knew Terry was going to come on the show, I I have a copy of Live Your Bliss. And I thought, well, I wonder what Terry has to say about Crossroads. And as soon as I opened it up, bam, I opened up to the chapter that's entitled Expanding Beyond Self-Imposed Limitations into Realms of Greatness. I got chills. (laughs) I I got chills. Because I think that, you know, I think that the human... uh, condition is that we think we can't go into realms of greatness. Mm -hmm. What do you say about that? Well, greatness is realizing and and actualizing your own true divine nature. And that's really what it is. And when we we attain that, as we attain that, then uh, we bring forth more and more of our talents and our abilities. And we... um, it's uh, it's such a joyous experience because we become self-realized, and that's another word, God-realized. I mean, not that I'm God, and not that my, but ourselves. We have the same God. We have the same source. So I could say myself is God. So if I love myself, I'm loving God, 
And when I'm loving God, I'm experiencing the love that I've been seeking because it's me, and I'm allowing it to flow. And, uh, yeah, so what I was thinking about your topic is really cool because lots of people are at crossroads. The whole planet's at crossroads. The Boy, solar system is at co- uh, crossroads right now. It sure feels like that, yeah, doesn't it? it's big, and, and, and that's why we need to know how to ride the wave. <clears throat> So you don't hit yourself on the rock. Right. And that's, you know, that's called finesse. That's about, (laughs) you know, surfing the experience we call life, but it's us experiencing, you know. That's Mm -hmm. all we do. We call the life, but we are life. We are satchitananda vigraha. That means we are uh, eternity, which means we are existence. So you, the dot, death is not possible in existence because it's we that are existing that are inanimating this dull matter. So that's us. And then we are uh, sat, that's eternity, tit, knowledge or consciousness. And consciousness, that's we're all, we have consciousness, we are consciousness. And within consciousness, we have the knowledge that we have gathered. And that also includes the activities, how we act on that. And that's the challenge because the knowledge that we may have is not the knowledge that's really true about who we are and our possibilities, our potentials, talents, and abilities, what's really available to the living entity. And so what we many often time we're operating from the knowledge that is false, but we're acting on it, hoping to get the results that we want, but we don't. We sometimes do, and then we sometimes don't. Right. So so I just want to, let me, can I repeat what I think I just heard you say? Because that was sure. a lot of information. Oh, my goodness. So what I heard you say is that we are uh, eternal beings mm-hmm. and that we are in uh, experiencing this thing that we call life. Mm-hmm. And And then what else? Well, what we are is we are existence. So oh, existence. We that's are the, existence. That's the thing that caught my attention. Yeah, existence, see, is another word for eternity. And so lo- what happens is because we're so small in size, we're atomic in nature according to the Puranas of the Vedas, and that's what I study and uh, apply. So the um, uh, it says, in a sense, that... Um, our big problem, our only problem, is to misidentify ourselves as this physical body, as this mind, and as our intelligence, or basically the knowledge or information that we have. And so this false information of believing we are these physical bodies causes people to fear death. Right. And they also causes people to believe to survive I have to have water, food, and air. No, that's not true. Living entities don't need that because that's material. Your body needs air because that's the gas it's running on. Right. And and it needs some food or fuel. And actually, in uh, different times that we would call the Satya Yuga or some people call it the Golden Age, people rarely eat anything because the frequency of their body is so high and they're so engaged in spiritual life that, uh, and if they eat, they would eat basically fruits or maybe some leaves or something. But and it, it's a different frequency. So we've all been so programmed to believe that uh, we need to survive. We don't need to survive. We are survival. And to be, you know, so if you say, "Well, I've got to survive out there," well, that's stupid. Because, but that's because we're I- I- existence. We yeah, are, we are existence. We are it. You can't die if you tried. It doesn't exist. You are existence. But that's also a problem because what are you going to do for eternity now? <laughs> and most people, they're just looking backward. Oh. And they're just, what they're doing is the, the mind mm-hmm. is the greatest um, terrorist weapon ever it created when it's <laughs> mis- misused. Yeah, I love the way you say that. The mind is the greatest terrorist weapon ever used. I love that. Absolutely. And when people know that, they keep people in terror because mm. the person is immobile and they fall into fear. And fear shuts down the immune system and shuts off the flow of divine creativity, love, intuition, power, you ta- you, whatever you desire. It's, and, and then fear is very um, diabolically held in place by the fear of letting go of the fear. Okay, I have to say what you just said. 
the fear is diabolically held in place mm-hmm. by the fear of letting go of the fear. Absolutely. Yes, I can feel that. Yeah, it keeps it anchored in because when they sort of give away, people say, well, I can't, I, I, would like, I don't want to be afraid, but I can't give up fear because fear is keeping me from this thing that I fear from happening. That's not true. It actually brings it to you. You can, you can be, like, I'm pretty aware of what's going on on the planet and everything, but I don't live in fear. But what it is, is I do, if I'm driving down the road and I see there's a big hole in the road, I'm not afraid. I'll just avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty simple and pretty smart. Yeah. I don't have to torture myself. And then what we are, we, we're self-torturers. And that's this whole thing when we come, like, to crossroads. It's all about, well, what choice should I make? Or a lot of times people are, are looking into the past of what they lost, what it could have should or would it be. They right. can't quite get that it's gone. Right. It's gone and it ain't coming back. Right. And that's a way of holding on to it oh, and keeping themselves stuck. And, and thinking about it and then talking about the people, <laughs> what they did, what they should have. This is in, in uh, uh, Sanskrit, it's called prajalpa. And that just means talk on the street. Oh. It's just, he did this, he did that, I had that, that, and then I lost it. I had all that, and they didn't give it to me, and I was waiting all the time. I could have had it. Now I'm getting old, and I'm like, oh, nobody likes me. Then I'm going to be into it. It just goes on and on. And this is an, a symptom of the disease of the infection of fear. And that fear is making the outer world and others your God and your source Mm -hmm. of your existence, your life, and everything, and God is. And it's also in the world that they're moving into greater uh, ignorance. People are afraid to say the word God, because first of all, you have to get rid of the concept of the psychopathic God who tortures people and who wants you, you know, to burn in hell, and you're going to burn in hell, and, and there's these little people with funny little hats on are going to say that you don't go to hell, but you're going to be somebody else. And people parade around with crowns. It's like the Queen of England. She's the biggest welfare recipient in the world. <laughs> she does nothing. <laughs> That's all it is, is welfare. And it's that sense of uh, this abuse that we have had that we're used to it. We've and desensitized just, ourselves. Yes, we, we torture ourselves through our own emotions. Yes. All, and that's why I talk about live your bliss. All negative emotions are destructive. They're because you stop being yourself who is love. You turn off yourself and it's painful. So, Terry, I, I have a couple of clients that are at yeah. this reconstruction point, right? And, um, and, and this one person is looking at job changing. And, mm-hmm. and, and I keep telling him just what you said there is you're you're holding on to the past and now you're going to build another job a new job Mm -hmm. on exactly the same premise that you had built this other job that you're unhappy at Mm -hmm. so where you know you've got to take a break in between Mm -hmm. and center into the truth of who you are Mm -hmm. and then create from there as opposed to creating from the same bad job to the next bad job to the next bad job Mm mm-hmm I want to I want to read a quote that is in your chapter, uh, expand beyond self-imposed limitations uh-huh. in live your bliss. And um, you said, a closed mind is. Well, now I I misquoted it. A closed mind is the no, is what keeps the limitation of humankind. When a person is both unaware of and closed-minded about what exists and what is possible for her or anyone else to attain spiritually and materially, she limits herself beyond measure. No one can solve her problems using mm-hmm. the same consciousness that created them. Mm-hmm. And, and, and that, I think that's a great def- definition of a closed mind because people think that they're in, in the, the thinking and, and then beca- be building that hamster uh, circle in their head. They mm-hmm. think they're problem solving. They think they're, they're going to come up with a solution, but all they're doing is revisiting what they already did, right? Well, yeah, but see, what happens is by when we misidentify ourselves as this physical body, we then believe that prosperity is money. 
And instead of, I am prosperity, and maybe everybody out there, just say that, I am prosperity. I am prosperity. Yeah. And what that means is to go forth to do what you want with enthusiasm. That means within God. Oh. And what happens is we have this soulmate who is God. Oh, I and, love that. And people turn away. They're all looking outside for their soulmate, and nobody's ever going to match up to God. <laughs> Because even by definition, that's the totality. So here you've got the totality who loves, adores you, even worships you, and, and enjoys you, and nobody turns to God. And, and so they think their, their source of everything is the money from the job. So when they want to think about where else they're going to go, all they think about is, well, I've done this before. I know how to do it, and I know how I can make some money from it. And so what they're doing is working for money. Right. Instead of working for love. I would much rather work for love. Well, absolutely. And then money comes and had, whatever else you need. I had this conversation with um, a, a, a young trainer mm -hmm. that I, at my gym who's uh -huh. he's 19. And just this, you can see within, he's just the sweetest heart. And all he's talking about is how he doesn't want he doesn't want to be broke. He wants to have money. He wants to have things. You know, he, he, he was telling me uh, describing the dog he wants, and he wants it because it just represents strength. And and I, I had to stop him. I said, okay, so really, what is it you want your life to be about? Mm -hmm. Do you want it to be about money, or do you want it to be about love? Mm -hmm. And it, it it totally stopped him. He was he had to think about it and. You know, and he said, well, you know, the right answer would be love. <laughs> I know, but that's, people think they'll get sex with money. Right. And they think, so they think that's love. So that's well, money why means the you're money successful. is, and they want to be comfortable. They want to have a comfortable bed. They want to have good food. They want to have all these things that we see on TV and everything, because basically, if you look, he wants to be happy. Yes. Everybody wants to be happy, and because we are Remember, sat, chit, ananda, bliss, we are eternity, that means existence, we are consciousness, and we are ananda, which is bliss. Bliss is our true state of being, when we are being ourselves. And then there is love, that love is that emanation, and, and it is a caring for of the object of your love, for their pleasure, that's love. Well, I, I, I will share with you, I've shared a little bit with the listeners, the last two years of my life, that has really been what I've had to do is there was a huge deconstruction in my life and, and uh, you know, all the grief and the fear and the shame and the blame and everything. And then I worked, th as I worked through this, and we I've talked to the listeners about, you know, you have to have those feelings and then move through them. You don't sit down in, in a pity party and with gather all those people of fear and shame and guilt and hang out with them you go through it but and what's occurred is just what you're talking about if this feeling within myself of this eternal consciousness that is keeps expanding within me and then I can see it expanding around me and and what it's done is it's brought me into a place where I love and respect myself mm -hmm. for the first time in oh so many years mm -hmm. And I did not realize that I, you know, I didn't realize that I didn't love and respect myself. And I think a lot of people think, well, when I'm happy, I love myself. And when you're not happy, you don't love yourself. But the, in the unhappiness, you still can love, well, love happiness yourself. happiness comes from giving. Uh-huh. See, what everybody's wanting to get, to get happiness so they don't get no satisfaction. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Mac, right? Uh huh. But because they are trying to get something they already are but aren't expressing, aren't using. Mm -hmm. And so we have this consciousness of, uh, oh, I deserve it. You're going to see the whole I deserve, don't deserve are ridiculous because they're duality. And if you think you deserve, your little mind also says you don't. You no, know, forget about deserving or don't deserve. And that's ridiculous. You have to earn it. And that's called cause and effect. That's called karma. What you give out, you get back. That's just the law of this material world. And it's also a spiritual law, but not in that sense. It's, it's helping people to get into the real flow of the giving and the receiving because it's, um, 
it's reciprocation, it's love, and it's like in a job or in a relationship. But what gets people upset oftentimes if they're, in a sense, going to work for someone else or they're getting married for whatever reason or whatever. I think we don't need all these rules that we've had about how long you're married, you're not married, you're this or that. But being in relationship is one of the fastest ways to grow, uh, to evolve, because all of your stuff is probably going to come up and hit you right in the face, and you think it's them. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And, yeah, and at the same time, a successful relationship doesn't mean you're staying together. It means you got what you needed to get, and you both learned. But then we have to look at, okay, if I'm going to go forward, what did I really learn? And as you say, most people, they get ready to go get that next job before he's, he's looking in the classifieds trying to get a job when he hasn't taken the time to say, what are my talents and abilities? What do I like? Well, because you didn't, didn't take birth on this planet, first of all, to pay rent and to go do jobs that you don't like for somebody else. You don't even know who they are. Right. Because they tell you you have to survive when you can't die. It's this big lie covers, so everybody's in stress, and they're in fear. And what happens is they're using the fear, they think, to protect them from the fear happening, but it takes them right into it. Now, it takes work for people to detach from all of that old programming. It sure does. It takes a, a lot, lot of work. work. Yes, it's not a quick fix, except it does happen in a moment, mm. the moment you get it. Mm-hmm. And that, that may have taken years. Just like you're saying how as you've gone through that change in your form of your relationship, then what you're realizing is how much you weren't being who you were. Absolutely. And how good you feel, but the tendency as soon as we either go to get into a relationship or, we, or we're in one, we keep thinking, well, do they like me? Are they happy with me? It's the same, like I'm a public speaker. And a teacher, and the, and I remember when the first times I started to uh, speak in front of a group, I was terrified. My knees are knocking, my <laughs> heart's pounding, my breath, and it's like, oh my God, I gotta fake it up here. And my talk was on self confidence. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> but you see, I wanted something from the audience, mm. and this is that false god making false idols. That means making others who they're not, because there is God, but the God, the job's been taken, and there's no ad in the in the classified for God. It always exists, supreme source, and this is loving, caring. It is who we are. It is we are part of that. We are geniuses. We're gods and goddesses. We have all these powers and abilities, but people are have given that power to the government, to religion, to psychopathic gods that are going to punish you or reward you like Santa Claus. Oh, yeah. And what happens is you ha- the, we have the power. We have all these mystic powers and abilities. And what people are doing is b- with they're shutting it down because they've been educated in a school system, which is not an education It's a, in a sense. It's a schooling. It's a, a, a um, t- consciousness tr- uh, trainer. It's why they have to put wire fences around school because the kids don't like it and they'll escape. <laughs> I, 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 I'm I laughing because I do agree with you, but I yeah. love the way you describe it. And, oh, I know. And, it's it, funny. It's very, It's I can totally see it. And well, I can it. see it too. And I go, my God. It, and, it, and it's like this whole sense of to control the human being because we're so magnificent. And we're not animals. Human bodies are not animal bodies. They're human. But we're told in school they're animals, so we can think you act. Animals aren't acting like some of the people on the planet right now. And, and we've been taught, like in relationship, to criticize each other, to use sarcasm. You know, they say Romeo and Juliet, the most wonderful love story. It's a stupid story. Dysfunctional families. They could have left in their love affair. They're going to die to show their love for each other. This is <laughs> who, who, what, what person wrote that? Yeah. And why? Yeah. And why did it become so famous? Well, you know, Terry, one of the things we talk about on Living Your Inspired Life here is, mm-hmm. is also about self-responsibility, which mm-hmm. is, I think, what you're saying 
in becoming more self-responsible. No, I, I don't. I wouldn't use that word. Okay, what I would use self-actable or actability because responsibility means you're always responding oh, to others. I like that. Why do I have to respond to anybody? I can act from. Wonder if the person comes at me with anger. Like, say somebody's going through a divorce, or they're going through a separation, or they, you know, the job is changing, and 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 the, the people want to fight. They want to say, "Well, you said this, and I didn't said this, and then right. you did that." No, no, it doesn't work. You don't need to fight. And the thing is, it's like say there's somebody you're still in a relationship, and they're texting you all the time, and they're calling. Don't answer. People always don't answer. No, you're answering because you want to stay in it. Mm-hmm. And you want to play the game. And the game that is played in this material universe is good guy, bad guy. Right. That's it. That's right. It's Us good against evil, them. It's good guy, bad guy. That's it. And then you're gathering. person is gathering uh, like there's a law case. They're going before the court, whoever their friends, to prove the other person is bad, but I'm good. And then you play <laughs> out all of the proof. They right. did this, that, and everybody goes, oh, I can't believe it. But what, how did, how's that working for you? Yeah, and it, it just keeps perpetuating the problem. Is it, yeah, and you're not really, you have to look at why are you doing that. And that's when we, I think what you mean when we say self-responsibility is instead of thinking of I'm responding to everybody, let me get into my true divine nature. How do I want to be in this relationship? That's what I mean. How do uh, yes? How do what, I want to be in life, and it, and then exactly act on it? Exactly, and you have to. But so a lot of people they don't give themselves the time. My granddaughter had just, you know, this one boyfriend is gone now. She quickly got another, and she's just a magnificent person. And trying to say, honey, take a week and go to some, get a little cabin by a lake or somewhere, and just be with you. No cell phone. My home is a cell phone and wireless free environment. Oh, wow. Yeah, I don't play that game. I don't want that going through me, my body all the time. I love that idea. That's really it's smart. It's so peaceful. I live in Ojai and... and oh, it's peaceful there. Yeah, and in Ojai, you go into restaurants and it's it's cell phone free. You don't... Yeah. And everybody's used to it. Nobody, you know, you can always uh-huh. tell the people that are from out of town because they walk into a restaurant on their cell phone. Of course. And it's like, well, yeah, there's a place for it, but they've gotten so addicted to this. And we have to look at our nature is addictive. So get addicted to God. Get, get addicted to joy. Get addicted to bliss. Get addicted to, and, and what happens is, it's like it, there is no law that anybody out there going through a transformational change of any kind has to feel bad. But we but because you don't care, you don't feel bad. Why do I have to feel bad to show you that I love you? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. Yeah, why, what does that mean? Oh, and that I miss you. No, but my, I, my daughter, who was 53, passed away a year ago, uh, July, here at my house. Oh, I'm sorry, Terry. I know. And I'm just so glad that she came home to her mama. And it, mm. it's a story and all that. But anyway, it was like um, the life she was living there in you know, down in L.A. or whatever, was um, she wouldn't give it up. But it it it, it t- caused her to leave her body. Took its toll. It, it took its toll. And even to the last, it's almost she had to have that cell phone. I have people that they, and they never are off of that. But I didn't used to have one. Right. And, you know, ancient t- times, tribes, there was like a tree. They call it like a telephone tree. You go over and you talk to the tree, and whoever you're talking to through the tree gets your telepathic communication 100 miles away or 200. You say, see, we're telepathic, but now we can't be telepathic. We have to use the phone. You know what? That sounds like um, that movie Avatar. That's kind well, of what they were be d- like that. illustrating. Yes. yes, because what you don't use, you lose. There's a really good um, uh, a documentary called uh, Pyramid Code, and there's it's a two-DVD set, and... Pretty much, I like everything she said. I'm not really in her agreement with Ignaton, who was a feral but There was this old man who is an archaeologist, Egyptian man, who lived in that hole. It grew up in the area of all of the pyramids and everything. And he is so fabulous on that, his knowledge. And he just keeps saying, you have to know. And he said, 
the the ancient Egyptians before Ignatan, before the one god, they were male and female balanced, and the men with the wigs that was showing that their female had been developed, and oh. yes, it was to bring forth the both those qualities that we have within these bodies, spirit and soul, uh, you know, masculine, feminine, and have these. And he said these, these Egyptians at that time were using 360 senses, uh, and oh we're my only God. using five or six. Oh, my goodness. You know why? Why? We're not, we stopped using them. And little by little, like taking little thin slices off a block of cheese, it's gone. Wow. Wow. You have to activate them. Wow, that's profound, Terry. It is. Um, Terry, we're going to take just okay. a quick break. We're talking to Terry Cole Whitaker, and we're talking about Crossroads and her book, Live Your Bliss. You're listening to Living Your Inspired Life on News Talk 1590 KVTA. We'll be right back. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones who will make a difference. We are the ones who will change the world. We are the ones. We are. We are. We are the ones. We are. We are. I've been feeling like I can't make a difference I've been feeling like there ain't no use Feeling tired and a little unconscious Coming up with every kind of excuse Till I realized it's not all up to me When we join together we shape our destiny To see a world Welcome back to Living Your Inspired Life. I'm Susan Burrell. You're you're on News Talk 1590 KVTA. And we're having a fabulous conversation with Terry Cole Whitaker, the author of Live Your Bliss, among tons of other books. I have at least four of your books, Terry. Mm -hmm. So we've been talking about Crossroads, and you've got a plethora of information that... I, I'm fascinated by all the different research you've done because you've mm-hmm. studied the ancient Vedas, which is the mm-hmm. ancient Hindu sacred writings. Mm-hmm. And it's not really Hindu. That's the name the English gave to anybody that lived in India. So it like lumps everything together, and it's not. There's many different paths and many different schools of knowledge within that. And so I particular, in particular studied the Puranas, and it's called a Vaishnava path that I like. That oh. gives me the greatest pleasure. I did not know that there was... Yeah, well, people don't know. Because, they, you know, the English is, oh, well, they're Hindu. And then everybody thinks it's one way. Because it's, it's all about prejudices and labeling. Mm. When people say, oh, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian, I'm a, I'm a Hindu, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a this or that, I'm a Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Libertarian, I'm black, I'm white, I'm tall, I'm short, I'm fat, I'm thin, blah, 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 blah. That's all false ego. We sure love to label ourselves and other people, well, don't no, we? To label is to limit. Completely. Completely. And everybody wants to because they want to, well, where do you fit? Where do you belong? And all of that. And it's, it's, it's interesting because then you have to take on all the karma of all that because you have to buy into that consciousness. Okay, speak a little bit about that because what, what do you mean? How does karma get associated with labeling ourselves? Well, karma is called action-reaction. And when I said that, that chit, sat, chit, ananda, sat is we are eternity, existence, chit is knowledge. And with, I mean, is consciousness. And when, within consciousness is knowledge and also action. So we act on the knowledge that we have. And if we have the wrong knowledge, we're, going, we're not going to get, in a sense, the result that we'd really like. And so... What uh, karma is, people might call it the law of attraction, 
but there's five influences for every manifestation. It is not simply our action-reaction. It has a few other things, because you can see people working really hard to attain something, and they never do. It was also because they also don't maybe have the past karma to deal with it, but it's not what they really desire or what they really want, or it may not be God's highest will for them, or they've been influenced somehow in nature, like we've seen floods and all these things have changed people's plans drastically. And then you also have other people. You might be like in a relationship and you, you know, feel you want to go over here, but that other person doesn't want you to go over there because they think they're going to lose you. And, you know, like you're, you've got to have the death grip on each other if you're going to be together. Literally, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and some people have to die to get out of the relationship, I'm mm. telling you. Because they do, they're so locked into that and, and have made that other person so much their source that they don't think they can survive or make it without that person. So, and again, that, that so there's these five influences. And so this, what, what we know then, for instance, if you, uh, Stanford did this research with children and found that they are, that the children, meaning human beings, are basically good. And what would happen was they'd have a situation where the very first response for these young children was kindness and generosity. And then then they would pause. They went into their memory bank, and they thought about what their parents had told them, and and they changed their mind. And then they were cruel, hurtful, stingy. Yeah. Wow. Changed right in that moment. And, And I see, we've been taught out there that human beings are ruining the planet. That's not true. We've been programmed and conditioned to, to do these kind of things. We've been ultimately victims. But, but when we wake up to the victimhood, we no longer are victims. Right. Because and then we could see how we made those choices, but we made those choices out of improper knowledge. And, and we this, can this, make this, new this, choices from that. Exactly. This book that I've been, we've talked about before that I'm working on about discernment, the first name I gave to it, the book, it's not going to be that, is the number one mistake everybody makes. And people think, well, what is it? Well, we don't get proper knowledge before we make a decision. And, so, and so by knowledge, you're not talking about the, the mental research, because lots of people... Might, well, it's all knowledge. So but knowledge you're talking is, about the inner knowledge. It can be all, either inner or outer. So there's knowledge that is truth, like absolute truth, which works for everybody all the time, that everybody can rely on because it's absolute. Mm-hmm. And then there's our relative truth, our our game of relativity that we're playing here. So you can see it's relationships, it's relativity, it's duality, it's I'm good, you're bad, it's cold, it's hot, it's up, it's down, mm-hmm. I like you, I dislike you. That's all that goes on here. So, but that, it also functions uh, according to the, what you give out, you're going to get back. It's like an outflow is going to bring an inflow. So if we're operating on the knowledge that says you're a loser, you're not good enough, there isn't enough, uh, uh, it's always lack, and there's something wrong with you, no matter how hard that person may effort to attain something, inside they're not in agreement Right. With what it is they say. Right. So, and then you have to look at, and this is a lot of what my work is now, because they say, well, you're a person who will say, I'm in this situation, but I don't want to be. I feel that that's not true. You want to be there because you're a God. At some level, it's maybe your act of I'm a terrible victim, so you have to be victimized all the time. And, and, and also it's part of our research to say, well, what happens if I'm a victim all the time? I'm not making it wrong or bad. Mm-hmm. It's just what people do. Mm-hmm. But then people get stuck because they, they think, how can I get out? I'm in a trap. Well, it's your trap since you made it. Do you want to get out? Well, and that goes back to what you were talking about, your, your influences. So what do you desire? Exactly. Do you want to stay in the trap the, or not? Yeah, you have to tell the truth about it. And first level of truth is I want it. And the people say, well, I don't want it. Well, then you're not going to get out of it because you're lying. Right. 
and it's okay. And we're trained to lie. It's just babies lie. You know, they cry to get the mother to come over, and if the mother doesn't come, they quit or they go do something else. And so, uh, we, and we're taught not to tell the truth about anything. And but so we're lying to ourselves, and right. that's the problem. That's definitely a conflict inside of you. Yeah, I have to say, okay, right where I am is where I want to be. Now, everybody out there, if you really get this, because you're a God, that, and you say, well, no, you don't understand. I can't go because I don't have the money. Mm-hmm. I can't go because they won't let me. I can't go because it would upset my father. Or my mo- Wait a minute, this is all your excuse that you're using so you can stay there. Right. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Because you're a God. And, Wake and, up. And we love to go around, and like you said earlier, we love to go around and get agreement from everybody. Yeah, see, I'm... Oh, yeah. I, I have to stay here because look at all this other stuff, and if I left this and that or whatever it is, the job or whatever... Yeah. The, and we go around looking for agreement until somebody agrees with the thing that we think we're supposed to do as opposed to the thing we feel within ourselves that exactly. we want to do. And then you, they have to read my book, What You Think of Me is None of My Business, because I'll tell you, you what we do is it is so strong in us that ridicule is such a powerful thing. Oh yeah. That that you know it's 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 a, it's like ridicule me all you want. I'm going to be who I am. I my my identity does not come from who you think I am and what you want me to be. I am who I am and that's who you and, and in the 80s when in the and even before that it was in the 60s people started thinking well I want to know myself. So what do you have in, in the mainstream media is laughing at people. Oh, they want to know who they are. What a fool. they want. And then everybody, oh, yeah, that's stupid. No, it's number one. Right. You have to know who you are, or else what you're doing is you're, you're living a fake life, one that you've constructed, because, and that's called that we're psychopaths with an identity crisis. <laughs> <laughs> but this is like the eternal question, right? Who am I? Well, it's easy. It's easy to find out who you are. You have to start with, okay, what it is, is, it is in looking who we are, it, it's, it, you have to start finding, you also have God with you. You have to start talking to your soulmate. And that, people say, well, I don't believe in God. Well, good for you. God exists whether you believe in God or not. And people, so people are pr- so proud they're atheists. Well, or they say the universe brought this. The universe is a 3D printer machine. <laughs> I love that analogy. Now explain why the universe is a 3D well, printer machine. Well, because it's operated machine. by consciousness. The first, uh, uh, the first traumatic axiom is all is mind, which means all is consciousness. And if we see that, even the Russians, uh, scientists, they, they uh, found, discovered torsion physics. They can see that everything in the universe is alive. It's because it's animated by living entities, us. Right. Yeah. And our consciousness, we are, you know, there's divine God consciousness, and then there's also our individual consciousness. And we want to become God conscious so that we are one with our source uh, in heart and mind. In heart and mind. But we're not one with, we're not the same as, we're gods, but we're not the big deal gods, we're particles, uh-huh. parts and particles, but we have all those same qualities. We have divine intelligence. So it's like to, to, for people to begin to that in your jammies tonight, as you get into bed or wherever, start talking to your eternal partner and start having a relationship and you'll be really surprised. And that's not a punishing God, doesn't hate you, just loves you, adores you. And it does take, it it is an inside job. You can't keep, I mean, okay, so I, (laughs) I've taken like tons of classes, read Mm -hmm. tons of books. I will continue to do that because I, I realize I'm, a, a quester. I, I am on a quest uh, mm-hmm. of just finding more eternal knowledge and wisdom. and Well, being more of yourself. And that's... That's really what it is. And yourself is... Okay, and your yourself and myself are the same. And yet you and I are individuals. It's called achincha beta beta tattva. This is a Sanskrit statement that we are inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. 
You have uh, what people are going. It's either this or that. That's Greek logic. That's wrong. Oh, it's yeah. not either this or that. It's this and, and that, that, all the above and beyond. Yeah, I like that. That feels more I- expansive. Yeah. That's expanding beyond your self-imposed Absolutely. limitations. Absolutely, right there. Right. Oh there. my goodness! Mm. Into realms of greatness, and each and every yes. one of us on the planet can do that. Absolutely, because we you have all these powers all the time, and we're using this to keep ourselves stuck. And then you have to do the the honest talking. And really looking, what am I getting out of of torturing myself with my negative emotion? So, Terry, let me ask you this question. It's something I brought up before we went on air, but mm-hmm. it, but it kind of fits in here. Is the, uh, so right now we're just talking about this idea of how we personally torture ourselves mm-hmm. because we're unaware of the consciousness and the connection to divinity that we are. No, because we torture ourselves because we use that to manipulate others. Okay. That's it. We Because we think our happiness comes from them and our pain comes from them. And because we want to be happy, when that it also comes back to what you said. And when you don't know your nature is bliss and happiness comes from giving. That mm-hmm. means doing your work. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like so many people want to say when they're happiest moments in nature, taking a walk, working in the garden, your babies taking care of your babies, your kitty cat, your dog, you know. It's like the, the person who is giving in the relationship, their love is strong. The taker is a blamer. Right. So let's talk about, uh, I shared with you that I'm working with a, a client who is in between this this uh, consciousness or well a, a experience of uh, having absolutely no money to pay her bills and looking at companies that she's built that ha- are going to call in millions of dollars and right. she's stuck in the middle and we've been doing a lot of work together on on uh, bridging that gap and she's let go of a lot of old you know she's realized she was operating out of a poverty consciousness Mm -hmm. and blah 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 and she said to me she still feels like um she's like wiley coyote in the roadrunner Mm -hmm. cartoons where he runs off the cliff chasing the roadrunner and then he just hangs there for a moment and then he drops and she's Mm -hmm. she feels like she's what she's calling hang time she's just hanging there waiting for something else to shift. Well, she has to look at what does she think is going to happen if she gets all the money or she doesn't get all the money. How is it going to make any difference in her life, in her? Within her. Yeah, how is oh. that going to make any difference within her? What, yeah. even, what is it you're not doing now that you think you're doing if you had money? She said, well, paying the bills. Well, yeah, you you can do all kinds of ways to deal with that if you get into that. The key is what is her life's work? It isn't about the money. It's what is what what is her work? Where is she giving? What where is she working for the welfare of others to bring happiness and prosperity to all other living entities? How's she doing that? So let's walk this down just a little bit more because um, because what I know about this person is that she is giving of her time in all these different areas. As well, yeah, but I don't understand what is she waiting to do something? Why is she concerned about this? coming or not coming it's uh, just stuff right i think because there's a there it's survival there she's stuck in survival right now well yeah but does she have food right now this moment in this moment well, i don't know about tomorrow you there know <laughs> there's a lot of people out there i don't that's know about it. tomorrow this people don't get this that first of all when we're i think was it sunday was appreciation day or something i don't know mm-hmm. there's whatever it was whatever but it's be nice to, uh, appreciation means to increase it's a it's a financial term when you appreciate something it increases right and what happens with this not enough consciousness which i call the poverty consciousness and from the poverty consciousness comes envy and arrogance oh. and and it says there's this envy of other people who have this so this this poverty consciousness is that consciousness of not enough. So no matter what they have, it's never enough. And you can see this with people like that have billions and billions. They billions. Of, they don't stop. Right. Because they still have no satisfaction because they they're not using their money and resources. I don't under, It doesn't appear that way to really build their spiritual life to really use that to grow spiritually and to do that which is good for all humanity and all living entities animals plants but they're not 
they get caught up in you know whatever it is they have a little look do a little charity get a little pr and make hide all the other stuff that they're doing i know that that game but what happens is we give money such power and so if all we had was maybe a can of beans be so grateful that you have the can of beans and give the glory to God and be so appreciative, more will come. Right. And more comes, it's like our, our experience of, of, of what we call life, but it's not really life out there. That's the animation. That's the virtual reality, the computer program being manifested all around us in that three-dimensional reality. And we're not even here, really. But we say we're here. We're not. We're projecting this. This is a collective, uh, uh, agreed-upon kind of a, of a reality. And so what we, what we uh, with this not enough, uh, we get in, people get used to talking about they don't have enough money. So they're chanting the I ain't got no money mantra right. all day long. All the time. And they're telling other people their problems. Never tell other people your problems. Except maybe someone, if you're coming to Susan, you're coming to someone like me or someone who knows that's just a transition. We're going to use that to help you make advancement and attain what you really desire and need. But other people, they see you that way and they agree with you and now you're stuck. And so this person, when if this person is giving and is doing all of that and yes, they have the bills, well, the person needs to keep doing her work mm-hmm. and not stop and needs to get really and maybe she is in appreciation but and and if you have to find your clothes out of a dumpster for a while i was talking there's one of my students her uh ex-husband and her daughter's father he has five acres free and clear uh in big sur that has like about four or five houses on he gives them to all of his kids he lives out of dumpsters this was given to him by his family he never pays for anything. He doesn't want to. And, and, but he gives. And wow. he gives to all of his children and his ex-wives because he's got a different mindset. And when we're in the mindset of how much money we have to have, how, how the house has to look, our clothes have to look, the cars have to look, it's all of this thing that we're working and doing everything for how we're going to be perceived by others. When you get down to it, you got to do what makes you happy. So if she's doing what really makes her happy, she and she's doing for her work, maybe she needs to charge more money, maybe she needs to do a few other things, and then it, when this other stuff happens or it doesn't happen, she can deal with that when that happens. Right. But she's try, most people, they're living in the future. That's it, I Or think. in the past. They're hankering for what they don't have. Or they're lamenting and telling their stories of what they did. Yep. That's it. And living in the future doesn't... So let, let, we, we have a few more minutes, Terry. But well, I, the living in the future, in a sense, is this. I have hope. Give up hope. Mm-hmm. Because the other side of hope is hopelessness. Right. So we're going, oh, I hope my future will be better. It can't be. Because you are future. It is you being in this moment. So why are you not being blissful now? Mm-hmm. And why are you saying, well, when this new deal happens, when I get married again, when I finally get divorced, when I get, you know, then I'm going to feel good. Why don't you feel good now? Because we've given the power to atoms and molecules to give us pleasure or pain. Okay, so you're saying... Atoms and molecules, that's all the material world is made of. And so we've just, so now we're looking for our pleasure... In stuff. In, in that stuff. Person. Outside of ourselves yeah. instead of within ourselves. It, within. And when you are, you are pleasure going somewhere to happen. <laughs> Say that again. You are pleasure going somewhere to happen. Oh my gosh. I think that's going to become my new mantra. I it am pleasure. Going somewhere to happen. Going somewhere pleasure to happen. Pleasure is your nature. Love of God is supreme pleasure for the soul. And when we have soul pleasure, we have self realization self-awareness. Uh, we have self-satisfaction. Yes. God even gives you an orgasm. <laughs> Doing nothing. 
How about that? Terry, I just love and adore <laughs> you. I just love and well, adore I am. you. I like to research, and I'm working on myself and want to help others as much as I can. And, I, you know, I found these secrets, and that Live Your Bliss is such a great transition book for people to get why it's important to be in bliss. Being in bliss doesn't mean you don't care. Right. Being in bliss is being who you are, and then you love, and then you feel. I mean, oh, so much. And, and you have happiness. Well, happiness comes from giving. If you're not happy, it's because you're not giving. Oh, Terry, Terry Cole Whitaker, thank you so Aww. much for joining me today. This has been a very fun and fast ride for me. I Aww. love hanging out with you. I love hanging out with you, too, Susan. And I can't wait for your new book. Oh, when goody. it when when it's complete, when it's you're going to let me know, and we're going to oh, have you we back. we will. We will. So, thank you, Susan, and everybody out there. Everybody, be good to yourself. You are good. You've never made a mistake in your entire life. There's nothing wrong with you. Don't buy that anymore. Be who you really are. Have that courage and become friends with your soulmate, and everything will work out nicely. Thank you, Terry. Uh-huh. So this is Susan Burrell. You've been listening to Living Your Inspired Life. If you've missed anything about tonight's uh, topic or program, you can go to livingyourinspiredlife.org. And I am just going to say, and so it is, namaste. Through me, I feel joy.